The issue of abortion could potentially be on the ballot in almost a dozen states in November, and there's some interesting polling to say that Donald Trump isn't necessarily hurt by this issue despite the fact that many Republicans end up being dragged down based on their positions on the issue of abortion. So in today's video, we're going to go through these polls and then analyze the issue of abortion in the country as it is today and what its likely impact on the 2024 election will be. So we're going to get to all of that in just a second. But first, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing down below and liking this video if you enjoy. So there's three states where abortion is currently going to be on the ballot for sure in November, New York, Maryland, Florida. And then the rest of these states in sort of the lighter purple are states where it's being proposed. And the states I want to look at the most are the states that are going to be toss-up states in 2024, Nevada and Arizona, because Florida is going to go to Donald Trump. The question is by what margin? And abortion's already going to be on the ballot there. This is basically to roll back, I think, the six-week ban that was put in place by Governor DeSantis. But in Nevada and Arizona, uh, this is potentially an issue that could drag voters out. And that's what the polls had previously been saying. But there's a latest poll from CBS uh, that indicates the contrary. And this New York Post article uh, sort of breaks it down because in the state of Arizona, for example, Donald Trump leads Joe Biden 52-47. And obviously the issue of abortion is polling significantly higher than that. If we take a look at the poll itself, it gives us some interesting insights. One of the questions that was asked in Arizona to voters was if Donald Trump wins, he will try to either make abortion illegal nationwide, leave abortion up to the states, or, you know, unsure. And 33%, only 33% of respondents said that he would make abortion illegal nationwide. And those are sort of your hardcore Democrats. 44% said he would leave it up to the states, which really means that Donald Trump doesn't care that much about the issue. He's not making it a focal point of his campaign. And I think from a strategic standpoint, that's really smart because Republicans, especially those running for president, should not touch this issue with a 10-foot pole. So the fact that the majority of voters either think Trump's going to leave it up to the states or are unsure is a really good sign for Donald Trump. But I think it's one of the issues that he's able to navigate pretty effectively because I think most voters realize that Trump is not some crusading evangelical Christian that wants to end all abortion. Uh, even some liberals will concede that that's not really the vibe he gives off. So I think that's an asset, uh, especially in a climate where abortion is basically left up to the states and you have some Republicans talking about taking federal action to do some sort of 15-week ban, etc. I think Trump really shouldn't focus on the issue at all. I think there's way more pressing issues than abortion, uh, immigration, the economy, infrastructure, things like that. Those are things I think voters just trade even, you know, in the Rust Belt. I think those are things voters care about a lot more than abortion. But another question, of course, uh, is about whether or not voters give Donald Trump credit for overturning Roe v. Wade. In Arizona and Florida, less than 15% of voters give Donald Trump credit. And that's sort of your evangelical conservative Christian constituency that's super anti-abortion. They're basically crediting Donald Trump. Uh, when it comes to the blame factor, and this is where sort of liberal respondents come in, 39% blame Donald Trump for Roe v. Wade. Again, that's under 40 in a state like Arizona. I'd say that's not too bad. Only 35 in Florida. And then neither uh, is basically almost a majority in both states. So, you know, that's really not a bad number for Trump either. I think it just plays into this broader sentiment that most voters don't really see Donald Trump as caring too much about the issue in general. And he's not really making it a big part of his campaign. So it's really not in the minds uh, of a lot of voters. Um, you know, when you're looking at how these voters feel on abortion, and again, this same poll uh, these respondents gave Donald Trump a lead against Biden in both states. In Arizona, it was like five points, and I think in Florida, it was close to 10. 65% of respondents in Arizona would support a right to abortion in Arizona, 60% in Florida. And again, these same voters, this same pool of respondents is voting for Donald Trump by five and 10 points. So that means there's significant crossover, uh, as I've talked about before, with Republicans and the issue of abortion. You have about a third of Republicans who are very libertarian to even pro-choice on the issue and will still vote for Republican candidates despite their opposition to it. So, you know, this is pretty good news for Republicans overall. Obviously, these numbers, uh, as we go further down, uh, aren't you know, when it comes to Gallego and Carrie Lake, which we'll talk, we'll make a separate video about that because that's not the point of this video. Uh, but overall, this really shows you that I don't think voters are making abortion a top issue like they did in 2022. Because if we go back to 2022, abortion was still a very fresh issue. Uh, Roe v. Wade was overturned in June of that month. 
uh, and Republicans had really no recourse. You know, they didn't really fluctuate their position at all. Their messaging was terrible, uh, especially in more culturally liberal states like in the Midwest, places like Pennsylvania, Michigan. Uh, Republicans just had an utter collapse. And that was really because they had no recourse to uh, Democrats' accusations that they wanted to ban all abortion because, quite frankly, they gave them no reason uh, to think the contrary. Pennsylvania and Michigan, two states that are going to be super important in 2024, were the states that I think you saw the biggest backlashes uh, to the Dobbs decision and Roe v. Wade being overturned, especially in Pennsylvania because uh, Dr. Raz was pulling ahead of John Fetterman on election day and ended up losing this race by five points. Now, that's mainly because you had another candidate on the ballot, Doug Mastriano, who basically had no exceptions for abortion at all. He wanted to lock up people uh, who had abortions, provided abortions, and this position was uh, very extreme, and the voters of Pennsylvania responded accordingly. And, you know, you had Doug Mastriano losing in traditionally now Republican counties, counties that have voted Republican for decades on the presidential level, places like Beaver County, Cumberland County, um, and obviously bluer areas of the state got bluer, redder parts of the state turned a lighter shade of red. So it was a complete unmitigated disaster. Uh, the Republican Party of Pennsylvania saw Doug Mastriano coming for months, didn't do anything to stop his rise. Uh, and ultimately this was the end result. You dragged down essentially the entire Republican ticket. Dr. Oz ended up losing by five. All of the key Republicans in battleground house races lost. So, you know, it was a complete disaster. If we go to Michigan, you also saw a pretty similar effect. You had Tudor Dixon versus Gretchen Whitmer. And Gretchen Whitmer was somebody who had uh, a big target on her back, especially with a lot of the COVID hypocrisy and just sort of riling up uh, conservatives in Michigan. Uh, Tudor Dixon ended up losing by over 10 points. Again, this was a state that was within low single digits back in 2020 and a state that Donald Trump won in 2016. And this is a state that would really help Donald Trump in 2024, sort of pad his victory if he wins here and maybe loses uh, Pennsylvania or Wisconsin. So Michigan could be incredibly important. And yet this was a state where Republicans were extremely hurt by their position on abortion. And we could even go to much redder states, the Kansas abortion referendum back in, I believe this was the summer of 2022, was really the first giant wake-up call for the GOP to sort of uh, navigate this issue better. You know, the pro-choice side won effectively uh, an 18-point margin in a Republican state that usually votes for Republicans by 15, 16 points. So massive, massive crossover. You know, even in the deep red parts of the state, the pro-life position is running behind Republicans 20, 30, 40 points, especially in the eastern part of the state where you have, um, you know, obviously a more liberal attitude on the issue. But just all around abortion is a really bad issue for Republicans. And yet Trump is somehow able to walk the tightrope of, you know, appealing to religious conservatives uh, and obviously getting them to turn out in the states where he needs, while also not really turning off independents and moderates. And again, we still have many months to go. Obviously, you could say something uh, very dumb on the issue and perhaps uh, change voter sentiment. But I think as of right now, most voters don't really see Donald Trump as somebody that cares about the issue at all, which is why in a lot of the polls, you have a majority of people saying they're either unsure or don't really care um, in regards to Trump's impact on the issue. And if we look at state by state polling, as we did um, in yesterday's video, Donald Trump is up ahead in all of these states. Again, in Arizona, he's up by 5.2. And that's the average. That's not just one poll. That's all the polls aggregated together. Georgia is up by five. Michigan is up narrowly. Uh, Nevada is up by six. North Carolina is up by five. Two points in Pennsylvania, very narrowly in Wisconsin. So obviously some of these states are within the margin of error. You know, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. And those are the states that are going to decide the election. But in the Sun Belt states, the traditionally conservative states, uh, and also the states where abortion is likely going to have less of an impact since it's more culturally conservative, um, Donald Trump has higher leads. Again, um, barring Arizona, we'll talk about Georgia, North Carolina, because Arizona does actually have an abortion referendum. But as we pointed out, according to the latest polls from ABC, uh, it's not really an issue that's registering with voters. Looking back at the midterms, uh, you know, these were states where Republicans did better. You know, Georgia, for instance, uh, Republicans won every statewide election, but of course, uh, the Senate race with Herschel Walker. If we go to North Carolina, Republicans won the Senate race there, so on and so forth. So in these Sun Belt states, uh, Republicans didn't do nearly as bad as they did in the Rust Belt. And that could potentially be something we see in 2024. Donald Trump does 
uh, decently better in the Sun Belt. He wins Georgia, he wins Arizona, he wins North Carolina, potentially wins even Nevada, uh, which is pretty ironic because Nevada is sometimes pulled as one of the most pro-choice states in the country, but I guess it has more of a, a libertarian, anti-democrat um, sort of leaning than the Rust Belt. But Trump wins all those states, he still loses the election overall because he loses Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And that's why to this day, I still think the 2024 election uh, is sort of a toss-up. If not, Biden still has a very slight advantage because the Rust Belt is what Donald Trump needs. And right now, Joe Biden's numbers are looking probably the best in the Rust Belt. The Sun Belt, not so much. Uh, the Rust Belt, which is traditionally more Democrat, Biden's doing a lot better. So obviously, as we get closer to the election, we'll see what happens. But, you know, I'm starting to think that, again, this is a presidential election. Issues like uh, foreign policy, immigration, the economy, infrastructure uh, are a lot more important to voters than abortion. Abortion uh, ranks significantly lower because, you know, midterms aren't necessarily about those issues. You're not voting for a president, so you don't have some of those issues coming to the forefront. But in a presidential year... Uh, very different story. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Please leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any more videos I put out. As always, again, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.